Hello my good friends, you are in for a treat. We are starting off the Mud Fossil University debate series. And today we are going to debate Yale in absentia. Now, this is one of the professors which I have been having a very hard time with at Yale for the last eight years. And of course this is Roger who will be debating Yale in a number of areas. And these are the areas that I would like to talk about today. Except we will probably only get into one today. Because this is what we call a series. So we're going to start this series with geology. Now, we've all been told that geology is a bunch of rocks, all dead stuff, and dust, and it all accumulates together, and lava spews all over, and it collects, and you get sedimentary this, and igneous that, and metamorphic this, and tectonic, and so forth. Now, what if that wasn't right? What if it wasn't right? Let's talk about that. There was stories that came down in history about a giant flood. There was a guy named Emanuel Velikovsky. That's Velikovsky with a V, ski, S-K-Y. Now, he was an extremely excellent historian and went back in 1950 and researched all of the ancient texts, the papyruses, the tablets, the carvings, the statues, everything in the museums, and he ran across papyruses and so forth that were eyewitness accounts of a catastrophe that happened 3,500 years ago. And he explains the whole thing. Now, a little earlier than that, there was a great salt water flood. That was recorded as well in every culture on the earth. And it wasn't that long ago. So, what if this was the case, and there was gigantic creatures, they all drowned in the flood, dead giant creatures. I have evidence to present against Yale to show that it's true, and they refuse to see it, so I am going to present it in absentia. Now, what in education would change about history if these things were true? What if these are giant dead creatures we're all walking around and there's no geology to speak of? Everything here was alive at one time, it's dead now. And then there's a layer on top of a bunch of dead fossil fuel that is clay from skin and then on top of that, there's a bunch of dead stuff that turned into fossil fuels again. And then above that, there's growing stuff. So, let's talk about that. You have dead stuff underneath a layer of skin clay. Then you have dead stuff on top of it. And then stuff grows on top. The dead stuff was because of the flood drowned it. The layer of clay is because of the skin eroding from all of the dead creatures. It's skin clay, kaolin, and above it is all the dead creatures, and then things grew above that. So you've got coal, you've got a layer, and you've got fossil fuels. It's absolutely obvious what happened. There was no KT impact. I am going to present the evidence against you, sir, and then we will get to the truth, because you refuse to acknowledge mud fossils. This will not stand, my friend. Now, then we're going to go on to physics and accelerating light and what's in space. It happens to be loaded with biology. And this is no question, Comet 67P, they did the research out there, the Rosetta mission, the Philae lander landed on there, <laughs> sucked up a bunch of molecules, said, hey, guess what? There's a ton of organic stuff here and nothing else. Hydrocarbons coming out of your earlobes. Every bit of the, uh, the whole nine yards of biology is there. And they said it's so biological they don't know what to do. Comet 67P, they found extremely complex organic molecules. And I fully understand what those molecules represent. And they do too. And, and I have the chemistry of this. 
Our analysis reveals carbon in a far more complex form than expected. Carbon makes up the building blocks of everything that moves things in your body. We are carbon-based creatures. Herve Cotton, one of the authors of the paper, in a statement said, It is so complex we can't give it a proper, proper formula or name. I can. It's life. The results are more extraordinary given that previous results from Philae saw only light gases, organic molecules. Now they detected actual meat, basically. Now, that's where they stop it. Well, I have a little more, con a little more information on this. All right, this is the important part. These are the two, Kenneth and Juliet, which is the ones that they're, they're um, talking about. These particles they analyze, CH3s. Hydrocarbons, CH, 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 hydrocarbons, that's what you're made out of. And then there's of iron, silicon, sodium, all of the th rest of the things that are b parts of your body. And they know what this is. There's not a scientist alive that knows, understands biology, that doesn't understand the chemistry here. All right, that is exactly identical to that stalk and that neck and so forth. That is a tendon ball. And that ten that's the anchor for a, a, a finger. And that has the same architecture, it's the same the same item. And the ball is on the bottom. Now, the reason the blood blows off blows out on this side is because it's the red blood side. The black side doesn't. You see, this is the black side. Same thing here. That's a fingertip. You see that? That's apical, or, or that's the um, finger, the um, phalanges. And then there would be an apical tuft that would be on the end that's sitting in there somewhere. Just like that one. And that is the holes that blow out on artery sides. They do not blow out on the vein side. See over here? That's the vein side. That's the artery side. And I'm going to tell you something else, Professor. In your anatomy books, in the biological books, they're not even correct. There's only blood on one, only artery on one side of anybody's finger. The other side doesn't have any. And not only on giants, on people's side, fingers too. That's where the red blood side, that's where the black side, blood side is. That's why this blew out because it's, it's, hydrated and that is not. It's a totally different substance. FeO, Fe2O3 and Fe2O2, different substances. And that's why it blows out on this side. And that's why that blew out on this side. And that is red blood right there. That can be tested. That can be drilled out of there, rehydrated, a little bit of acid, and it can be tested. You got to go in deep because this is contaminated 100%. But if you drill in there, first of all, you clean it up with bleach, you drill in there good, clean that all out, bleach it up, drill in again, a little deeper, take that. That's where there's going to be red blood in there. That's an, our, our, a meteorite, and they're all over the place. This, I'll show you another one. So you people are just not paying any attention. You don't care. All right, that's the comet's makeup. That is all biological, exactly the same stuff that's in you and me. There's no big rocket science here going on. There's maybe rocket science, but it's not related to this. This is basic biology. You see that? When the sunlight hits it just the right way, all these little tiny holes are nothing more than blood vessels. And when they cook it off, these gas off just like they would on your gas grill, but they don't burn because there's not enough oxygen in space. So what you have here is polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. All of those CHs are from blood boiling out. And those are the cell membranes, CHs from cell blood cells. Okay, they're called lipids. They contain CHs and Os, a major function, positive energy storage. There's a long hydrocarbon chains, and they are long, and they are CHs, hydrocarbons. And that's the same stuff coming off of Comet 67P. No mystery here. This is way beyond what they're allowing us to, to see, which is our trueness. This is Mimas. This is one of Saturn's moons. You see that? This is a tendon ball. All three of them are tendon ball. You see that? That's Iapetus. That's the ring around it. That, that's that ring, and there's where the tendon attached.
And that's exactly what we're seeing on those moons. The tendon strap breaks off. I can't explain it, but the entire universe is completely filled with gigantic life. Okay, up here on Mud Fossil University, a week ago I put this up. Nobody expected this, and it changes everything. Nobody expected this. Alright, and these are giants. There was giants all over this earth, and they were so enormous that the average mind cannot accept it. Now, this is from my mud fossils. This is a giant finger. The whole tip. thing. And, and I have these things in copious quantities that are because of attacks. This, was, this is the and one this is, that was in my uh, yard, actually. <laughs> And uh, well, all the stuff is well, most that I have, and that is the fingertip, finger nail on it. That's 30 inches wide almost. And uh, and I have the actual skin right there. That's the skin. You see it? That's the skin. See it? <laughs> That's the fingerprint. It's the same as that skin. You can see the pattern here. Let's see what else we got here. You should come up and see this stuff. All right, these look at this. This is a lung. Preserves like perfect. I got all, I got so much stuff. It's embarrassing. All right, so uh, Yale needs to start stop and, and and come to the table. This is this is nonsense. And to do this against students that's the way i'm seeing it because it's it's not for the benefit of the student that they are working here and they are fiduciaries and they are required by law to work for the best interest of the student and right now they are working totally against the student and in their best interest because they're going to be seen as silly now for not paying attention they should have investigated this day one and and said well let's look into this and, and then they would i would have never been gone any further i was forced to do what i did and i did it and i will continue to do it and they will pay attention they will pay attention this is going to stop this is going to happen because there is nobody that can walk away from this everybody that's tried has found mud fossils within 15 minutes and some of them have found literally new species in 15 minutes i will show you okay tish egerton walked out and found that well not this particular one she found a ton of this stuff she found a bunch of what we call no toes they don't have any toes in the front of them their the toes are there but they're inside the flesh they have springs where we have tendons and that's a hominid that's the leg and these are the springs that bolt in here and i'm telling you this thing is engineered i'll show you another shot all right, this I have no toes here, but mine are like really perfect. The only thing that comes off is the uh, fibia, the little side piece falls off. Now this is one of Tish's. The same thing here, the tibia falls off, or the fibia falls off, and this is what hers is. Now these have some kind of metal stakes running through it. Now this is what a normal foot looks like, what like we have. They have that ten the tendon running up here to like a little saddle. The bone sits on and that tendon holds it together and there's a whole bunch of tendons running through here. Well, not in the no-toes. There's that saddle, there's the tendon and the strap and the, and the heel. Alright, there's the heel bone, same as here. There's the strap, same as here. But this one doesn't have any tendons. You see, tendons here, no tendons. Now, there, and I, I looked at this very carefully. The first spring comes up, it comes this way with that one, and then the second one comes up. The first one drops, the second one drops. Very elegant design. And it has, see these two little spots here? I've gone through this very, very closely. And, and that is, um, there's actually springs running through here. A little, I mean, it's just, it's bizarre. I mean, there's giants everywhere, and there's different style toes and designs. This has toes. The toes were here. These are the pads that run underneath them. They had like what they call gumite. It's a it's a gooey substance that runs underneath the the foot to give them pads. There was no shoes on these people. That's they were built in. See, that's the bottom of one. There's the calcaneus heel bone right there. It's a little eroded away. There would have normally been a big pad that went run under it, but it's this type of stuff. It's a real gummy, see all the little holes in it? It's a, it's a spongy pad.